I can only live in the here and now and the future, like my building my future for the life I want it to be. And that's the beauty of this journey for me has been realizing, yeah, I mean, I the teaching I grew up under was harmful. It was damaging and there are lasting effects. Mm -hmm. But I only want to now in this season to look at this and say, okay, I know other people are struggling with this as well. People who are still stuck in this. I want to be um, vulnerable to share my story and hopefully it will help just even one person to, to be free from this. As a star of TLC's 19 Kids and Counting and its spinoff, Counting On, Ginger Dugavolo has spent more than half her life on TV. This is crazy. I know, can you believe it? Now, the 29-year-old is opening up in her first solo book, Becoming Free Indeed, My Story of Disentangling Faith from Fear. So I decided to write this book, Becoming Free Indeed. Um, it's the story of my faith journey. And I grew up under some harmful teaching that really threatened me to um, be just like fearful, confused about who Jesus was. And I threatened me really to leave um, Jesus. And this book is my story of how I've had to disentangle truth from error on my way to finding freedom in Christ. 2017 was the first time I had realized that maybe Bill Gothard wasn't a Bible teacher. And that's basically where it started, but it, it was introduced to me through my brother-in-law, which I talk more about in the book as well. He, I saw his family, they were a Christian family who did things different than us. And in our world, it's all black and white. So everybody should do everything the same. And I was really challenged by that. And then also challenged by how my brother-in-law viewed the Bible as a whole and how he read it differently than we did. And so that's what really started me on this journey of realizing, okay, there is a healthy balance where you can read the Bible and come to these conclusions, but it won't look the same for everyone. Yeah. And we weren't the cookie cutters. And so it wasn't until Jeremy and I went to a conference that Bill, Bill Gothard had started. Mm -hmm. And I went back there not being totally in that world because I had already started to come out of some of this. And when I went back into that setting, it really broke my heart to see people who were still there and believing all of these things and how damaging it was to their lives and people leaving Christianity altogether, leaving the Bible altogether because they just were so confused um, by this teaching. So that's really what drove me to write this book. So the teachings, um, in a nutshell, it was based on fear, superstition, um, really leaving you in a place where you feel like, I don't know what God expects of me. Um, he could be pleased with me one day, or he's just like angry at me the next, even as um, someone who believes in God and is a child of God, it's like, it, it was so confusing. And the fear kept me crippled um, with anxiety, not sure um, where to turn. And mm -hmm. so one example personally in my life was with modesty, right? Like I thought that I had to wear dresses only to be pleasing to God. And if I step outside of what I think is expected of me, because he said, oh, you're only supposed to wear skirts or dresses, no matter what activity you're doing, right? So if I stepped outside of that, I would think God's God's going to be so displeased with me and it could, it could bring harm on myself. Mm -hmm. I could be unnecessarily like in financial trouble if I stepped outside of these um, requirements that God has for me that I didn't know God had for me yeah. and be harmed. And so that was one modesty places I go, music I listen to with drums could bring harm on me. Um, friendships that may not be right in line with my bubble in, in his teachings, people who are outside of Gothard's teachings could bring harm on me if I was too close to them. Mm -hmm. And courtship standards. Well, we're officially um, courting now. Yay! That was another thing that I held to. And I would look at people who were dating and think, oh, they're setting themselves up for a life of disaster because this, this is, can't lead anywhere good. Mm -hmm. And now I see, no, I, I've seen more people honor God 
and, and live a very beautiful life who have dated and sometimes even better than courtship, you know, because it's like, I could be so consumed with that, like with having a chaperone, with um, not kissing before you're married and not holding hands before you're engaged. All of these, these things that I'd set up for myself that now I kind of laugh that honestly, I'm like, that's so crazy that I used to believe that that was the only way to um, success in life and realizing, no, God's word is um, sufficient. Like it doesn't speak about that. So I don't need to speak about that. I go back to the Bible to understand what God's perspective is on any, any given topic, really, yeah. um, whether it's money or politics or, you know, alcohol. And that, that was something that I had never thought, okay, I'm going to one day re-examine this mm -hmm. because it was always so solid in my mind of what that looked like. Mm -hmm. And so on every topic, I have had to come back and say, well, what does God's word actually say? Mm -hmm. And so the Bible is very clear about drinking and it, it, it simply says that alcohol is not a sin mm -hmm. and Jesus made wine at a wedding. Um, but also it does say that drunkenness is wrong and it's harmful to so many people. And so I, I see that balance. I personally don't drink, but I don't have a problem with other Christians. It's their liberty to drink if they so choose. Mm -hmm. And um, birth control, that's something that I always thought was like a, totally wrong. And um, I just no longer see it as that. Um, and so, yeah, definitely have changed. And it's been um, years of us discussing like with my parents, if I, like when I first started wearing pants, I had conversations with them about that and let them know, hey, this is what I see, you know, in the Bible, I don't see that's there, even though I said I would have held to it for all those years. And people can say what they want about your changes and how you got there, but Ultimately, we've just sought to like be really gracious and hopefully patient, like with my family and share those things, but then also realize I am, I understand we can be in totally different places and come to different conclusions. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, they will um, go on their journey and I'm on mine and each of us can arrive in different places at different times. And I understand that that's just the case, but we've just sought to like talk about those things and at times just agree to disagree. So I've talked to um, some people who have helped me walk through who are professionally trained to do that. And I think that's important as well because um, the layers of what uh, I've walked through, they can be deep and it's something that I think is each person can make that decision to see what's best for them. Mm -hmm. uh, but for me, I think it, it is helpful to have someone just to open up to and talk to about all that. Yeah. Um, it's just, it's another thing that's been so helpful, like, and so freeing. Yeah, While Ginger was taking the steps to navigate her spiritual journey, she and her family also had to address the difficult situation following her brother Josh's conviction on child pornography charges. Yeah, it's it's honestly just so tough to talk about. And so, um, I probably will just say this, that, um, it's so heartbreaking just to see the decisions my brother Josh has made. And, um, my heart just really breaks for the victims and their families and all that they've been through. And I just pray that, um, Josh will genuinely, um, change one day and come to know Christ for who he is and repent. I am always um, here for Anna and the kids at any point that they would um, want to, um, <clears throat> sorry, want to like talk or in any way I could help and love on them. Um, I know that they've just been through so much and, and so I just always am here for them whenever, yeah. whenever they need to help. While Ginger continues to focus on the future, she, her husband Jeremy, and their two daughters are loving life in LA. 
LA has been um, a really cool place to be. I always have loved big cities. And so when the opportunity came for us to move here, I was very excited. Um, I love the hustle and bustle, the variety of um, cultures that are here. It's just really, really sweet to like be in um, such a busy, awesome place. Like with, it's just, it's amazing. And for our girls to be here as well is so sweet. Um, I loved growing up in Arkansas and playing with sticks and dirt. <laughs> um, but being in a place where I think our girls will be able to see so many different um, backgrounds and perspectives on life, it's really, it's really sweet to be here in LA. And that's something that I think is so healthy for, for us, for our kids to be in a place where I'm not sheltering them from other perspectives on life, that's not what the word of God says to do. And that's not who we are supposed to be as people. And so um, to love those who are around us and to show them that love is so important, Christ-like love. And still holding to my my own personal Christian beliefs is fine as well. And so I want my kids to have that perspective of the world. One thing we have decided to do is to keep our girls out of the public eye. Um, I'm still in the public eye and just always have been, but um, just to give them that decision one day, if they want to go into acting, whatever they want to do, you know, it's like, that's their choice. They can be um, in a public space, but it, it's interesting. Like you just see as a parent, I just want, I just want to give my kids the best life possible. And so um, it, it will probably look different than my upbringing did as anybody's childhood changes from what they grew up in. And so we are in the early stages of parenting. And so we'll just see how the, how the years unfold really. Um, and just hopefully be there to give them all the opportunities possible to succeed. And they want to go to college, do that, like encourage them in learning and studies and um, see what career they may want to do. I'm, I'm good with that. I, that's different than the setting we grew up in. Um, and so, yeah, it's it's hard to say like what their lives will look like, but yeah. I wanna just give them all, all of the necessary components to like help them thrive. <laughs> my life, I want it to be the same no matter where I am. And so my perspectives, it's, it's a beautiful thing to like be around um, people from all different cultures and places and stuff. But my, my, myself, I am ginger no matter where I am. And I'm gonna be the same person, whether I'm in LA or in Arkansas, Texas, wherever I am. I want to be firm in who I am. And um, for my girls to see that as like a strength of like, okay, we know who mom is. We know who dad is. Like we're not unpredictable. We're not gonna change wherever we are. Yeah. Um, I wanna be informed of like who we are and stand true to that. No matter who we're in front of, if we're at church, we want to be the same at church as we are at home. And that's something that we're so committed to. Like it's, it's a beautiful thing to um, be able to like, hopefully show our girls that one day. I feel like this journey, although it has just been so emotionally exhausting, it also has been the best thing that I've ever done. Like I just feel every day I'm just so grateful to not be so bogged down by fear and superstition and thinking that God's out to get me for yeah. no reason. Mm -hmm. It has been so freeing. Mm -hmm.